Shalom, Shalom. Giving all glory on and praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Bahasham, Rakakadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, peace and salutation, blessing to the Akim pushing this word in truth and in sincerity, risking your lives and freedom to do so now more so than ever. I'm your fellow servant, I'm Yadia Mahar. I represent the GMS branch here in Cleveland here to feed the elect of the nation of Israel. Out of one, Ratazah, but now Ratazah, this is an edifying lesson. And I'm already sure brothers is familiar with this whole situation that's going on with these young women out here teaching, basically blaspheming the scriptures of the Heavenly Father. And um, this is basically a response to the Elder Manatazakba's video, the lesson that he did earlier today, all right, on this whole... Um, Quagmire, this whole situation that's uh, uh, um, basically a stumbling block. That's all this is. This is a this is a sifting agent, right? Sent by the heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh and the ones that's not rooted and grounded in this one hundred percent truth, this one hundred percent wisdom, understanding, knowledge of the heavenly Father, they're gonna be tripped up by this type of situations. But you had these young Israelite women. And they attempted, they did a horrible job at breaking down Revelation. It's the first chapter, in my honest opinion. All right, because they're basically saying that our Lord, our possessive pronoun, our Lord, Yahweh Shah is a so-called black man, which we said this multiple times. That's why we don't refer to ourselves as black Hebrew Israelite. That's a label and a social construct that these red Hebrew Edomites placed upon us so they can control the narrative. All right, we're not black, man. All right, when you go into the word black, the word black is actually a adjective, right, that describes a noun, which a noun is what a person, place, or thing. So, you saying that this is the description of who these people inly call Jesus Christ? No, because when you go into this word black, we're gonna go down to the to the point. Where it's going to say mean, fierce, terrible. Now the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah, he is fierce. He is terrible. He's a demon-like power, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. But then you got the word wicked, right? Which that's totally and uh, 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 completely contrary to Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, man. All right? He can never be wicked. Right? Look, it says figurative, figurative, figurative senses often come from the notion of without light. Well, Yahweh Shah, he is the light, right? He even told the the the, 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 pro, the, the, the prophets, all right, the disciples, he told them that ye are the light of the world, a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hid. It says without light, moral or moral or spiritual. <laughs> oh man, Latin Niger. All right, so that's the Latin word for the word black, niger, and that's found where? I believe that's in the book of Acts, the 13th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. But it says, many of the same figurative senses, gloomy, unlucky, bad, wicked, malicious, which we know that Yahweh Shah is not malicious, right? Because when you read in the book of, uh, I believe that's um, Habakkuk, if I'm not mistaken, where it says, wisdom shall not enter into a malicious soul. And we know that Yahweh Shah was the wisest man to walk the planet Earth, man. So how could you refer to our Lord and Savior as black, right? Which, when you go into the word black, even furthermore, it basically means a uh, void of light, colorless, right? Which we fall under the spectrum, under, under the hue of brown, man, right? You got different shades of red. You got two colors of people in this world, man. You got different shades of red people, all right? And you got different shades of brown people. Yahweh Shah would fall under the category as dark brown, right? Dark brown, right? Not black, okay? It says, the, metaf the metaphoric use of the Greek word melis, however, tended to reflect the notion of shrouded in darkness, right? <laughs> that's, ba that's, that's an insult, man, you know? Is it in the English? It has been the color of sin and sorrow at least since the 1300. The sense of with dark purposes, malignant, emerged 1580s. Necromancy, it is also the sense in black magic. So, yeah, let's look this word malignant up real quick because this is one of the synonyms, all right, to the word um, black. All right, it says malignant, tending to produce death 
or a deterioration, right? The, the Lord said that um, he come to bring life more abundantly. The Lord is, he, he, he said that I'm the way to life, roughly paraphrasing. Okay, he 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 ain't bringing death. We know that the uh, when you read Revelation six chapter, the scriptures identified the nation of people who would bring death upon the planet Earth. All right, okay, and that's Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, not Yahweh Shai. It says tending to produce death or deterioration, malignant malaria, especially tending to infiltrate, metastasize. And terminate fatally a malignant tumor, evil in nature. <laughs> Who? Come on, Yahweh Shah is not evil, man. Right? Yahweh Shah, he's perfect. Right? He he don't have a evil or a, well, I'm gonna say this: he doesn't have a wicked bone in his body, man. Evil in nature, influence or effect, injurious, a powerful and a malignant influence. Let's go more into that. <laughs> All right, it says um, passionately and rel relentlessly, relentlessly malev mal mal malevolent, aggressively malicious. All right, nah, that's the point on that, man. But like I said, the, our Lord is not black, man. We don't use that. We don't use that word to describe who these people inly call Jesus Christ. Right? He would be dark brown. Now, when you're going to Revelation is the first chapter and you read the 14 verse on down. It basically gives you a description of who these people inly call Jesus Christ. And the majority of time, people misunderstand the interpretation of that scripture, man, especially women, because the Lord, first and foremost, he ain't dealing with women. The only way you're going to get the proper understanding is you ask your husband at home. And then the heavenly father got to be dealing with him. Y'all boss, you know, I was shot to even give you the proper interpretation on what that scripture really mean, man. All right. And then <laughs> I'm going to play this. All right, keep going. So basically they edited this video and they put this um picture, you know, when they was breaking down Revelations the first chapter and they was talking about burnt brass. Burnt brass is not black. You can clearly look at it in comparison to the picture of this Israelite man you see on the screen right here, that burnt brass and his complexion are basically one and the same. All right. They go hand in hand with each other. So would you refer to him as black? Of course, no. He would just be a darker shade of brown, man. All right. He would just be a darker shade of brown. He wouldn't be black, right? You see this? Do you see this hoodie that this young woman As got on? They right? burned in a furnace. Burn fine bad. So how does that? Here we go. You know what I'm saying? And the scripture said, "Whose mouths must be stopped." We are. I suffer not a woman to teach. That was the title of the Elder Manasseh Zakbar's lesson. Anyway, they ain't supposed to be teaching anyway, man. See, that's the scripture said, "Pride go before fall." All right. Okay. But when you wanna, um. You you know, in reference to the color black, you could see her sweater, man. It's clearly black. The headband she got on is black. And her skin is clearly brown. All right. And she basically putting her foot in her mouth because she's going to say, how could you get white from that or brown? When you look at the burnt brass, the, uh, 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 the, 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 the description that they're using, that's clearly brown, man. It's not black. It's nothing black about this burnt brass image that they using in this lesson right here, man, which this is complete blasphemy, man, All right? And the scripture says, every idle word, roughly paraphrasing, shall be given an account in the day of judgment, roughly paraphrasing, okay? So, and that's why women shouldn't be trying to teach the scriptures, man, because that's not their lot. That's not their position. Your position is to, what, to to, to, to serve your, your man. That's a woman's position, man. Not to break down the scriptures, not to interpret the, 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 scriptures, man. the scriptures, man. All right, your your role is you can be found in uh, I believe that's Titus the second chapter, roughly paraphrasing, man. That's a role of a woman, man. All right, okay. Your role is not to be a teacher, and <laughs> Scripture says that, man. In the last days, roughly paraphrasing, our people was gonna be doing that, having itching itching ears, man. Right, and teachers, so it, it's something to that effect, man. Okay, <clears throat> so. And really, I don't even want to play no more of this video because this shit is like listening to a person scratch a chalkboard, man. I can't sit here and listen to this BS, man. All right? <laughs> really? You know? 
And the thing, the reason why this type of behavior is uh, um, allowed in this society, man, is because what? We don't establish the laws, the commandments of the Heavenly Father, man. That's why, see, a woman in the ancient days, if she did some shit like this, she would be made what? A public example, man. All right? A public example to the women that's coming up after her. All right? To know what to do and what not to do. And this is one of the things that you don't do as an Israelite woman, man. Trying to teach the scriptures, man. That's completely and utter madness, man. Okay? You know, so I ain't going to go more further than that. I pray this was an edifying lesson. I don't even I, I don't even think I brought a scripture out. So like y'all quoted some scriptures, you know, but I pray this is edifying. Give all glory on and praises to you. How about Shema and Shabbat Shema Kokadash? The bond of city of Pots and Elders, Great Millstone, Rule, Well, Peace, Salutation, Blessing to the Occupations, Word and Truth, Sincere, Shalom, Muaf, Lapa, Boah.